Um, right now, affordability, as most people know, is a significant issue for first-time home buyers. Yes. Across the country. Yes. In our community, in our area, geographically, it's insanely difficult for, for first-time homers. But we, that's why we're here to discuss exactly. and give people options. Right. So there's a lot. Oh of, wait, I didn't realize we were recording. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should introduce ourselves, right? Introduce yourself. Well, hi, uh, my name is Quentin Hardy. I am from New Res Home Mortgage here in Long Island. I cover New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, and Florida. Y si prefiere, también puedo hablar español y hacer hipoteca en español, or English. Your choice. I only speak English, barely. <laughs> uh, my name is Evan St. Gerard. I'm a real estate agent here in Queens, Long Island, Brooklyn, Bronx. Is there anything else? Pretty much New York. Just Staten Island down. doesn't count. Staten Island, we, we work with everybody. I'm going to be All four fair. boroughs. All, all four. Yes, four. <laughs> you just don't count. Four. We don't count the stepchild. Okay. But anyway, the, the purpose of the videos is to let people know that there are a lot of options out there. It's not just what they see or hear. Hey, there's this, this, this one program, two programs, and that's it. There's a lot of other programs, and that's the purpose of these videos. And I want to sit down with the qualifier to talk about some options basically that people don't know about yeah. that basically they hey here's an option that you might want to consider so mr qualifier absolutely yours. absolutely uh, as a matter of fact it's it's funny that you mentioned the qualifier because that's the name came from the concept that uh there were a lot of transactions where people would say oh this house is not mortgageable and i would swoop in and put a mortgage on it for people sort of like you know the superhero at the last minute yep. the cape but that's because i do a lot of renovation loans mm -hmm. about 50 percent of my business still at this point is renovation loans and i manage the renovation program for the country for new res mortgage but right now affordability is an issue for a lot of people especially first-time home buyers and there's something that fha has done recently that many people are not aware of well tell us about absolutely. it. absolutely uh, now as you know fha va fannie mae freddie mac there's lots of different kinds of renovation loans a renovation loan, for those of you who don't know, is essentially a mortgage where you have the ability to purchase and renovate a house. So if you've ever seen that show Property Brothers with the twins where you know, one of them's a realtor and one of them's a contractor, they're using renovation loans on that show. Of course, they never talk about yeah, mortgages because yeah. that would be boring television. Yes, yes but it would be. <laughs> it would be very about That's baby. why we're here to educate you so yeah. you can watch that. We make it fun. Yeah, and we're not going to be 30 minutes. No. <laughs> so you know, no. Gonna, no commercials. But... Um, Essentially, what the renovation loan allows you to buy a house and modify it. You could buy one that's in distressed condition or perfect condition. But what they did in November of 2023 is having a significant impact in 2024. They are now allowing for people to use a 203K, an FHA mortgage, 3.5% down program, to buy a home and add what's called an ADU. Uh, an ADU stands for an accessory dwelling unit. In our area, in Long Island, for example, it might be called mother-daughter, or you've heard it called granny apartments, or people who have uh, a separate living area inside their home that is rentable, that you can gain income from. Okay. Well, the 203K, if you find a house that does not have an accessory dwelling unit, but you want to add the accessory dwelling unit, either inside the same house, or let's say there's a yard, and you want to build an accessory outside. dwelling unit outside of your single family structure mm -hmm. in the yard, you can do that. And FHA will uh, allow us to count 50% of that potential income into your qualifying income. Okay. So if you were able to build something that has, I don't know, an extra thousand, two thousand dollars a month in rent, that's going to increase your income and help okay. you qualify for more. That's never been allowed before. There are other programs that will allow you to build the ADU, mm -hmm. but none of them that I'm aware of will allow you to use the projected income. Projected income. The income's not even there yet. The ADU okay. won't even be built until after you buy the house and close and then build it. Okay. And we're looking to see, I know this uh, Walmart came out with a tiny home that you could buy for under $5,000. Yes, I don't know if these things are real. We're going to find they're out. Foldable, um, <clears throat> they're foldable dwellings, basically. You buy them, they come prepackaged, and pretty much everything's supposed to leave intact inside. You fold, open them up, and basically it's a dwelling, and then you put them wherever you need to put them. Right. Obviously, there's no plumbing, no electricity. There's no, you, you none need of that. To do more. You need to do more, obviously. Right. It's just the bare bones. Obviously, whatever you're doing, you have to check with the or the city ordinance, basically, wherever you're planning to do this. Yeah, we don't want to do anything illegal. Yes, make sure that you can do that before you go any further, because you don't want to do all this and then, you know, hey, I can't do this. Right. Uh, yeah, and the bank, we, we want to make sure it can be done, too. Yes. Otherwise, that income's not there, and now we all have a problem. But the reason I was mentioning the Walmart thing is not necessarily that you're going to use that, but that's the trend that's coming. This is what we're seeing, mm -hmm. is people want either tiny homes, accessory dwelling units, something in the backyard that's rentable, something within the main structure. And for the first time, we have a loan 
that will allow you to do it and use the projected income. Right, I'm thinking something different. I'm not married, so I'm just speaking to all the guys out there. Just in case you're ever in that doghouse <laughs> and there's no tenants in that dwelling, <laughs> yeah, you're in the doghouse. You literally have a, a place house. you can go to, but you're still at the house. It's funny you said being single. I was thinking differently. A single person might buy like a three-bedroom house, mm -hmm. put the tiny house or the small or the accessory dwelling in the backyard and live in the, the dwelling unit. You could do that. And let the people who rent the main house pay the entirety of your mortgage. So now if you've got good credit and, and you can scrape together a down payment and you're concerned about making payments on the house, let somebody else pay for the house. You have your dwelling and now you're still gaining equity. You still have to feel comfortable with whichever combination you want to do. Absolutely. So but make it's sure a, you're comfortable. It's an opportunity that yeah. didn't exist 90 days ago. Uh, it, is, it is interesting. I actually, I can take it one step further. If you're doing that, you might want to consider like an Airbnb, but obviously check the area that you're planning to do this in and make sure that you can do that. Um, that's not a bad option either. So basically there's a lot of options out there. So we just want to give you some, some ideas. Right. And then obviously you're going to talk to the professionals and see if this is feasible for you. Uh, Quentin, based on this program, what did it have to do to qualify? Well, the FHA 203K, you need uh, typically a 620 credit score. If your score is below 620, we can make exceptions if it's a strong file. Okay. You do not have to be a first time home buyer and it's a three and a half percent down program. Okay. Uh, of course, we're going to look at your debt to income ratio. Just make sure that the person makes enough money to pay the mortgage. And that's, that's the most really important it. thing. Yeah. Uh, we're going to look at a two-year history, work history. It doesn't have to be at the same job, but we just need to know that you have been working for two years. Okay. And it's it's an FHA loan, not not no special hoops to jump through. All right. So if this is of any value to you, you find any interest in this, that you want to get more information, Quentin, how did they reach you? You can uh, give me an email. Shoot me an email at quentin.hardy at newres.com. You can put that on the screen somewhere down yeah, here. So it's gonna, it's spelled, gonna, yeah, right? it's going to spell. Or you can give me a call at my phone number, 516-614-4088. And of course, you can just Google my name, Quentin Hardy and Mortgage, and you'll find me. If you go on Amazon.com, you can find uh, several books that I've written on home I'm ownership. I'm glad you mentioned that, basically. This man does have books, <laughs> several books. So if you, I actually have, still have a copy, couple copies. So if anybody, you have the book? Oh, yeah. yeah. We got, so we yeah. have, you want to read the titles? Sure. Uh, so I've got three books. A Guide to Becoming a Homeowner for African Americans. Yes, it is different for us. Uh, this one is, this one's obviously geographically uh, situated. How to be a superhero home buyer in the Long Island market and how to buy your first home like a superhero. So the whole superhero shtick obviously is, is my thing I like. So we've got uh, three different books. And if you're working with, with me and Evans, uh, I'm happy to send you one of these books for free. I, I like to do that for my clients so they have this information as they get started. Or you can go and buy them on Amazon, your call. And make I sure free is a good deal. Though. Free is a good deal. Make sure you reach out to him, find out about these, have a consultation with him. After you have the consultation with him, you're going to reach out to me and my team. I'm a real estate agent, so I work pretty much Queens, Long Island, Brooklyn, the Bronx. You, you name the area, basically. If I can't get there, I have a team member that can get there for you. Uh, my number is 917-975-5985. Our website is mynyhomesales.com. Dot com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. No, I do not dance. Uh, YouTube. I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. So I don't have, well, I have one book, but uh, I don't have as many books as he does, basically. I am working on some stuff. But uh, my forte is basically doing the videos, get some education content. What he's putting in books, I want to put them on video. So I guess we have, my, well, yeah, I'm, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, yeah. and the YouTube channel is being built out more and more. Just look for the qualifier. That's right. All right. Any questions, feel free to reach out to us. There are no stupid questions. The only stupid question is the one that you do not ask. So we're here. We have a lot of experience. Utilize our experience to help you benefit you and your family. So I guess the next thing we're going to ask you is to call us.